This is Internet Marketing. Brought to you by Site Visibility at sitevisibility.co.uk. This is Internet Marketing. Before we start today, Site Visibility um, have just released their 2020 PPC automation guide. It's completely free to download and it's going to help you to get started with each of the new automation settings in Google Ads. This includes smart bidding, responsive ad testing, dynamic search ads and more. So the best way to accelerate your PPC growth in 2020 is to start planning today. So download your guide for free from bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y slash PPC dash automation dash guide. I'll say that again. Bitsly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y, P-P-C dash automation dash guide. And for those of you that don't know, a dash is the same as a hyphen. I just call them dashes. I don't know why. Sometimes I call them hyphens. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Today I'm joined by Heather Lloyd-Martin, pioneer of SEO content writing. Heather, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for having me on the show today. Absolute pleasure, Heather. And just uh, roughly where in the world are you? I am outside of Portland, Oregon. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, especially this bit about the pioneer of, of uh, SEO content writing, in case anyone doesn't know. <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember that when we were talking a little bit last week, I, I made you promise, please don't call me the grandmother of SEO copywriting because I've heard that one before too. <laughs> so we'll just get that out of the way and I'll yep. say it first. <laughs> yep. I have been in this world since back before Google was a search engine. So way back in the day when we were, say, alt, uh, optimizing for alt to Vista. And there were very few amount of people working in the SEO world. And when we tried to explain what we did, nobody ever understood it. So although that part hasn't changed, people still on the outside don't quite understand what we do. I've watched the industry go from back in the day where content wasn't a big deal. It was all about shoving keywords into the meta tags and seeing what we can do to trick Alta Vista to what we see today, that content is very important. It's considered in some cases, the main part of the algorithm that to pay attention to, to make sure that you've got good site content and that we see companies and brands spending a lot of time and a lot of money creating content that resonates with their target audience, but also does really good in terms of Google searches. So it has been a, a weird and wild journey through the SEO copy world. Fantastic. Now I want to talk, but by the way, you, you mentioned Alta Vista. I I used to, I remember Alta Vista, and I remember in the early days of the internet, uh, sort of uh, going on to Alta Vista and feeling very sort of scientific, and, and thinking I was probably the only only one of about five people in the world that ever went on to Alta Vista and looked things up. <laughs> but yeah, certainly. Well, back takes, then you may have been. <laughs> yeah, or well, maybe fifty. Uh, yeah, it takes me right back. It does. Now, what I want to talk about today is ways to squeeze every drop of ROI, return on investment, out of your site content. Or five ways specific. I think you've got five ways, haven't you? But let's start with why this is important right now. Why is it so important right now? Well, as we're talking about this, uh, there is a big global pandemic. We've got people that are being laid off. We've got a lot of folks that are really freaked out about what to do next, mm. right? And so one of the things that people start turning to is, what should we do to our, our, our content? How can we create a content strategy that still reaches our audience and helps them, but is sustainable, especially considering all the you know layoffs that might be happening. They might be doing more with less. People might be out sick. So one of the things I want to talk about today is like how to make this happen, how you can still keep going during this time of insecurity and still create really great content for your users, but do it in a way that maybe is a little bit less stress on the organization and you guys have a little bit more breathing room right so let's go on to the five tips then because uh, the first one actually i, I rather like because i do like acronyms especially ones that you can't pronounce as a word <laughs> and you've got to, it's o-y-d-c-p tell us what that stands for <laughs> I know. I was trying to figure out how to actually turn it into a word that you can say, but it ends up sounding like what a pig says. Yes. Um, OYDCP, it comes down to optimize your damn content, people. And it's funny that I'm bringing this up on a podcast that goes out to people that professionally, this is what they do, or they work with people, this is what they do. 
Having said that, it is amazing how many even large brands, I mean, certainly smaller and medium sized, but even large brands have been able to ride for a long time without optimizing their content. Um, and maybe it's because it hadn't been a, pa a pain point before. Maybe it's because they have a lot of writers that came from the print side. And so it's not a skill set that they have in house. But in this time of the world, if you have it leveraged as an opportunity, now is the time, right? Because people are looking online for information. They are looking for answers, right? And so by having that optimized content, those blog posts, the sales pages, ways that you can reach your customers, they will be able to find you online where before they weren't able to. And this is especially important for companies that might have done a lot of conferences and a lot of face-to-face -face things, right? And that's mm -hmm. where they got their lead gen is by having a booth. That's not available anymore, or at least not in the foreseeable future. So bringing that content in online and being able to reach people that way is the way to keep things going during a time that you can't do your normal kind of marketing. So if you haven't done it, now's the time. If you've done it and it hasn't quite worked for you and you don't know why your content is still not positioning, this is possibly the time that you look outside of your company and bring in someone who can help you find those low hanging fruit opportunities so you can get those content assets optimized and start reaching people in new ways. I like I like the way that you uh, I like your wordiology actually optimize your damn content people. Would you say it's fairly widespread that that just people just aren't doing that. And most, I'd say people, let's say organizations, it's probably a better word. Would you say most organizations are just really neglecting that as a rule? Maybe not most, but a surprising amount of them are not. And yeah. how they might be doing it is kind of like in a half-assed way of like, yeah, certain things they do, but they don't really pay attention to the majority of posts. And that those majority of posts could actually be that low-hanging fruit where people need to find that information. And, and I've even seen big companies say, well, we don't have to because everybody knows who we are and they're going to find us regardless. And in today's world, that is, we've I've seen that happen already where that's not true prior to all of this weird uncertainty happening. And certainly now people are going to be consuming content and finding companies and judging companies in entirely new ways. So it makes sense to be out there. Yeah. Now, the second one's about um, value proposition, isn't it? So specifically reviewing your, your value proposition. Just expand on that a bit for us. Yeah. And the reason I thought about this is I started thinking about Zoom, right? So Zoom, the, the video conferencing platform, mm. you hear about how it is booming right now, which makes sense. People are looking for new ways to reach their customers. You know, like I have a friend who teaches Pilates and that is how he's now able to give lessons is with Zoom because people can't go into a studio. So out of curiosity, I thought, okay, so what is Zoom doing right now to showcase that value proposition on their homepage? And I'm flipping over to them now, and I'm looking at their main headline, and it says, Expanded Zoom Phone Global Availability. And then the second one, because I've got like those little flashing things, a leader in the 2019 Gartner Magic Quadrant for meeting solutions. And it is the top video conferencing app. So these are all very, you know, company centered types of, of value props. It's like, mm. here is how we are cool. But that doesn't really meet people where they are right now. And mm. if you comp uh, compare that to join.me, um, it's not great, but they have something better that says, heads up, video conferencing is easier than ever. Mm. So if you think about those people that have been working in-house all this time and they might not have had to rely on video conferencing and, and now they're looking at what do I do next – Seeing easier than ever is a huge benefit statement and a huge value prop that can help people feel warm and fuzzy about that brand and want them to learn more. And so this is where I see a lot of opportunities for companies is that since we are in a very different time right now, go through your sales emails. Oh, my God. Yes, your sales emails that are apart from what we're talking about with email or your website, but sales emails, your your sales copy in your site, your blog and look at 
is that value proposition matching people where they are right now in today's world? And if it's not, um, say like, say you have a value prop that you go out and you work with people on site. And that is the big thing that you do for companies is you have on site trainings or on site consultation. Mm. Now is the time to be able to say like, hey, we can do this all online and to be able to match people with what they need to see and where they are now. And that will help reduce any friction where people are like, I really want to work with these people. But so the more you can say and show them, hey, I understand what those, those pain points are, then the more that you're going to encourage people to want to learn more about your company. Now, the next one is uh, repurpose content, which makes me very happy because we haven't spoken about repurpose content, I don't think, for a while on this show. So repurpose content to build, know, like and trust. Tell us about that. Oh, yes. And this is a huge thing for content producers, no matter what time of the world we're going through, right? Because it's so easy to go into this hamster wheel of content production, that every week you are kicking out X number of new blog posts or X number of new podcasts, and it can get exhausting yeah, and expensive. <laughs> And it sounds like you feel that pain just a little uh, bit. I've sort of been there, and I've certainly seen people who have been there, yes. or I keep saying people. Organisations that have been there, yeah. Exactly. And and it's because we get used to doing things a certain way and we don't question what we're doing. Uh, but now is the time to question everything that we are doing and look at, OK, if we don't have the money to go out and hire the freelancers that we used to, or if we are trying to keep things on track because we know that certain people might be taking care of their kids at, a lot and they don't have time to write the content that we want, is looking at those existing content assets to see what can we repurpose? What can we take and turn into something else? For example, there's a lot about like lead magnets of you give something to people who who opt in to your newsletter. What kinds of things are they going through right now? Chances are you've got some sort of content on your site that could help these people. And you might need to create like different lead magnets for different target audiences that you have. Mm. But you can take a blog post and repurpose it into a guide. You can take multiple blog posts and re repurpose it into a big PDF that you can send people. Or you can look at a podcast that you have created and see if you you can turn that into a PowerPoint. You know, these things that sound maybe over, uh, initially overwhelming, but I'm talking about spending one or two hours taking something that you have and repurposing it into a new format. And the cool thing about that new format is that, again, you might be reaching people in a different way than what you originally did before, but you're not spending a whole lot of time or a lot of money creating what you need to do. So there's a lot of options for every site to look at how can we take what we've already done, repurpose it in a different way and help reach a new audience. And that's a great way to save money and time. Absolutely. The next one uh, is about creativity, getting creative about content ideas, which is a uh, not a new idea, but tell us your 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 take on that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of folks that will say, here are some really cool creative ways that you can look at your content development, come up with ideas and brainstorm. Uh, and so I won't go through the gazillion of, of ideas, but on one that I'd like to focus on is interviewing subject matter experts within your company. Again, if companies aren't able to externally go out and run interviews and do everything they need to do to get new blog posts, a lot of times there's a person sitting at a desk, well, not anymore, near to you, uh, sitting at home that yes. used to sit at a desk near to you, um, that has a lot of insight about a product or a service or how to help in a certain situation. And just running a regular interview with them, it doesn't have to be like as official as a podcast. It's more like, hey, Andy, I want to talk to you about X recording that and then you can always you know come up with a transcript of that recording but 
it's an easy, fast way to come up with a content idea. It's a great way to highlight the expertise that you have within your company because you're interviewing Andy, that is this remarkable podcast expert and can share more information. You could even get all key phrase researchy about it and go to tools like SEMrush where they have that questions tab in key phrase research to find out what kinds of questions people might have about X. And so when you're interviewing that subject matter expert, you can use those questions to guide the interview. So that way, if you do have that transcript, right, then that transcript has those keyword questions that people are typing into Google to find the answers that they want. So it's a nice double duty of you get new content, you know, well, actually triple, you get new content, you get to uh, talk about the expertise that you have in the company in a really soft sell way. And that if you choose to have a transcript, which I'll talk a little bit about later too uh that is remarkable google father for you yeah i, I love the idea of um interviewing experts it's, it's a it's a very very powerful format Oh, yeah, exactly. And and you forget about that these people are brilliant, that you work with every single day, and they have these incredible insights. So why why not leverage them and give these guys the kudos that they deserve for being so good at what they do? Now, the last one, uh, number five, I think. <laughs> I can count. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, <laughs> five. Um, making it easy for people to consume your content. I would love your thoughts on that. Oh, see, this is a particular pet peeve of mine. And I bring this up because uh, in I have a group for the people that go through one of my trainings on Facebook. And one of my students posted, hey, this guy who's been around forever doing optimization stuff, he wasn't an SEO guy, he was a, a client, but one of those really smart clients that know how to do, run their own campaigns. Yeah. He created this video. And it's about what to do in 2020. And what are your thoughts on this video? And he linked to it. And I looked at the video. I didn't watch it because the video was like seven minutes. And in my head, anything that's not a quick like one or two minute video, I don't like to consume because I read so fast. Yeah. It's like, give me a transcript if you're going to have a video, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so we had this interesting debate of like, hey, yeah, he's this expert, but he might not realize that there are folks out there that will never watch his video because they're looking for something to read. So if you've got the podcast, if you've got the help videos, help videos is a huge pet peeve of mine as well. Um, if you've got the uh, the expert videos or whatever, add those podcasts below that. And one of the, or, or the transcripts, excuse me, and one of the people that I love to use as the example, the companies is Moz. And they've had their whiteboard Fridays going on forever. And they do a good job of having that video. But down below, not only do they have the transcript, but the transcript is very easy to read. They've, they've done some editing to pull out all the ums and ahs and weird pauses. Mm. Uh, they've got headlines, they've got sub headlines, they have graphics. So they've made that that post Great for the people who want to watch the video, great for the people who want to read the podcast, and great for Google because now that you've got that transcript there, that Google is able to work with that transcript and that gives that page a, a chance on positioning. So it's it's a win for everyone. And it's not that much of an extra step. You know, you can have that, you can have the podcast transcribe, you might spend a little bit of time editing it, but it's not as much time as like rewriting or writing an entire big article. So it's another way that you can save time and make something that you have do double duty. So it, it dovetails and piggybacks along with the uh, looking at how to get creative about content ideas. You know, you can interview that subject matter expert, you can cr have that podcast or that that audio file, and you can have that uh, transcript. So everybody is happy and everyone has access to what you are saying. Yeah, it's so true. It's interesting, actually, the different formats. So obviously, it sounds like you're a great reader. I hate reading. I'm really lazy. Um, really? I've always That's hated. Yeah, I only read books with very big writing and lots of pictures, and um, <laughs> I I love watching videos because I'm really lazy. I, I just like like it's sort of spoon fed to me, and I don't mind watching a long video. But yeah, but you're absolutely right because. Some people will hate videos, or especially long videos, and just want to skim through it. I suppose that's the one thing you can do with reading. You can skim through a bit faster, can't you? 
Uh, you can, but I, I'm curious now if you were to see a, say, 5,000 word long form blog post, yeah. would you read it? No. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd sort of scroll down it, seeing how spread out the words were. If they were really spread out and big, I'd probably read it. But I, if I saw a video, because you know, sometimes I get these long blog posts with a video embedded in, in them. Yeah. If I saw a video, I'd go, oh, a video. I'd just go straight to the video and watch the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> and, you, and you actually kind of reinforce uh, one of the tenets of like smart blog writing is to yeah. have those headlines and subheadlines to make that text easily skimmable. So yeah. if you wouldn't say have access to that video, you would at least be able to skim through the post and get the information you needed. And then if you choose to, you could go back and read more deeply or just wait for the video version to come out, whichever one you want to do. Yeah, that's interesting because I've actually, I don't actually forgot this but what i do is when i do come across a long form blog post that i do want to read i rarely read it on the screen i send it to my kindle and i find reading long form things on the kindle so much easier than the screen so it might be an eyesight thing for me as well Oh, that is interesting. Yeah. And maybe like how that content is originally positioned of like, is it easy for you to at least read enough to skim to send to your Kindle? Like, yes. I'm wondering if it wasn't formatted correctly, if you just be like, yeah, whatever, don't care. <laughs> Find yeah. somebody else who talks about it. Yeah. I, you see, the long form, I, I prefer to treat them more like books on the Kindle. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to get into my Kindle too much. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, good stuff. If So if you had like one, uh, one thing for our audience to think about as they leave this podcast, um, Heather, today, what would it be? I had to think about this of what is that big main takeaway to the the folks in the listening audience. I guess the big one that I, I really want to reinforce with folks is that it's tempting to pull back and go dark right now because people are confused. Companies are confused. They don't know what to do next. Totally understand that. This is the time that your customers, your readers are looking for thought leadership because that I don't know what to do next feeling that you have, other folks are having it too. And they're looking for someone to help. They're looking for someone to give them hope or to help them solve an immediate problem so they feel like they have a little bit of control in their lives right now. Mm. So even if you have to pull back a little bit, that that's understandable, but just don't go dark. Don't figure that you can hide until this is over and then come back and start selling and marketing business as usual because it won't be business as usual. You know, and the more that you can connect with those folks now, the more that when things do go back to what our new normal is going to be, they're going to remember that and they're going to recommend you or work with you or follow you, whatever that is. But you're going to have a, a group of built-in fans that are going to be grateful that during this time, you were there to help. Oh, well said. Mm, I like be it. Be there. Be there for folks. Yeah. How can our listeners find out uh, more about you, Heather? Ooh, I love this. Well, you can find me at seocopywriting.com. Uh, lots of free happy tips for you there. Uh, that You can find me on Twitter at, at Heather Lloyd, L-L-O-Y-D. And also on LinkedIn. I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff on LinkedIn right now with a lot of discussions and a lot of groups. Uh, so you can find my profile there. Uh, follow my stuff and let me know how I can help you and answer the questions that you guys have. Fantastic. And those will be in the show notes if you want to click and follow Heather. So thank you very much for listening, everyone. The show notes will be in the usual place, which is sitevisibility.co.uk slash podcast. If you're enjoying the show, please leave us a review. That would be good. Questions and suggestions. The email is podcast at sitevisibility.co.uk. Uh, you can tweet at site visibility. We have a site visibility group on LinkedIn. So that's all from me, Andy. And it's all from Heather. Hey, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Heather, and we'll see you next time on Internet Marketing.